Well, warm welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday, the 30th of December. Now, we like to keep an eye on the evidence as much as we can on this channel and base what we're saying on science. So this is just a short report on this paper from South Africa because it's remarkably encouraging. So this is the paper here. Now, you will see that it's a preprint, so it hasn't been peer reviewed yet, but it is by the most uh, reputable institutions in <laughs> In, in South Africa, and I've read it, and it's really good news because it's showing that despite the antibody response being reduced to Omicron variant, the T cell response and the B cell response, these longer lived memory cell responses is looking good and looking encouraging. And this would explain why there's been relatively few hospitalizations in South Africa and very, very much fewer deaths, very, very many fewer deaths in South Africa compared to previous waves. So let's look at that now because it really is a good news science study. Now, obviously, it's not peer reviewed. Now, I've read it and it looks pretty good to me. What I can't comment on is the, the analytical experimental techniques where they're actually looking at these B and T cells in detail because I don't pretend to understand that in detail. And they, they don't record it all in, in, the, uh, in the paper anyway. But uh, so as long as we take their word for that bit, uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. And I'm confident this will be peer reviewed in pretty short order it'll be it'll be fast tracked i would imagine so um sars coronavirus 2 spike t cell response so this is the spike protein and this is the t cell response these t lymphocytes that are like the second line of the immune system after the antibodies induced upon vaccination or infection now the good news about this is you get a good t cell response after vaccination and or natural infection so this is working well against natural infection which i did kind of suspect it would be because there's lots and lots of different proteins in the natural virus what i was more concerned about is because the uh, vaccines that we're giving only work against the spike protein we might get less of a response well we do get a less response but not not much of a less response it's still a pretty a pretty encouraging response so so my anxiety on that is now quite reduced actually now, uh, lots of reputable places in South Africa, Institute of Infectious Diseases and Molecular Medicine, University of Cape Town, for example, but basically every every university in South Africa that's worth mentioning. So um, we, I think we can rely on, on the, the integrity of this data. And it's not from the popular press. It's directly, directly from um, directly from the, the site. The mainstream media and the popular press has been really getting on my nerves lately, actually. It seems to be very alarmist and, and designed to entertain. And, you know, assure me, I assure you, I will make no attempt to entertain. If I do entertain, it's entirely inadvertent. It's not meant. This is, this is to give understanding that we want to do this, not, not to entertain at all. SARS coronavirus 2 Omicron variant has multiple spike protein mutations. We know this. In fact, there's about 32 of them. So it really is quite different to the wild type ones. These contribute to escape from the neutralizing antibody response, reducing vaccine protection from infection. So the neutralizing antibody response is reduced. Now, the antibodies are the immunoglobulins. Now, what it means here by neutralizing antibodies is if we imagine this virus with these infinite uh, spikes on it that we uh, know all too well now. And, and of course, it's these spike proteins that normally fit into the body cells to get the virus that would be the body cell there roughly drawn to some kind of scale this huge body cell being infected by this tiny virus that ace2 receptor that we know we now know well so that has to fit that that bit there the virus spike has to fit into there but what what the neutralizing antibodies do is they stick onto there and they make a big clump there like that literally a clump they literally clump onto it and uh, what that means is that that can no longer fit into there so the virus is neutralized in that it can't cause infection well we know that this antibody response is reduced we, we know that but in this study they assess the ability of t-cells to react with omicron spike now when we look at it the numbers don't look that big but of course this involves really quite detailed science on, on, on the cells themselves so actually the numbers are, are more significant than they would be in a, like a comparative epidemiological type study. So the numbers actually aren't bad given the high, given the high level of analysis you need to do to make sense of this, uh, 
this experiment. So in participants who were vaccinated with this is the this is the AD twenty six Cov V two point S. In other words, the Johnson, Janssen Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So participants vaccinated with that, there, were, there was uh, 20 of those. So immediately you can see that forms one group. And the good news is this has been working well in South Africa. And the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been working particularly well if a second dose is given. After two doses, it has been working really very well. Uh, so, that, that, so that's one group there. Uh, the next group was those vaccinated with the uh, Pfizer, uh, 15 of those. So you can see we've got one group of comparison there. We've got a second group of comparison there. And we've also got another group of people that were unvaccinated but were convalescent for COVID-19. In other words, they've been exposed to the natural infection. So we had a third group there. And as we said, detailed scientific work was done on their lymphocytes, their small lymphocytes, their B and their T cells with these three group comparisons. So quite a nice study, really. SARS uh, coronavirus 2 specific T cells play a key role in uh, modulating COVID-19 severity and providing protective immunity. So that's the background science. So there's these two levels. Well, there's multiple levels, but the, the ones that we all that I used to teach my students about the two basic levels. The first one, of course, is the antibody response. The second one is these uh, B and T cell responses. So basically, these B and T cells, these, these are the small lymphocytes, and it's the B cells that actually produce the antibodies, produce the immunoglobulins. And it's the T cell. There's, there's various types of T cells. Some T, T cells help or, or stimulate the B cells to make the antibodies. Other T cells, the T cytotoxic cells, will kill virally infected cells directly. So there's different types of them, and they're all absolutely uh, brilliant, well, uh, totally necessary for second-line immunity. And this actually could explain why people are still getting infected with, with Omicron, because the first line antibody response is not working, but they're not getting sick. At least they are in, in very much smaller numbers, we believe, or I think we can say that now. In very, they're getting sick in very much smaller numbers because the T-cell response is kicking in and stopping people getting sick. So it's it's a remarkably good news study. So the results, 78% uh, of the CD4 and CD8 T cell response to spike was maintained across study groups. So that's the spike protein. That's the antigen that the virus uses to get into the cells. Now, the CD4, these are the T helper cells. And the CD8, these are the uh, T cytotoxic killer cells. So these are the two sorts of, of, uh, of small lymphocytes. The, 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 the T cells, rather, the CD4s. And the CD4s stimulate the B cells. And it's the B cells that actually produce the antibodies. Or the immunoglobulins. So ideally, of course, you've got both. And the CD8, the, the cytotoxic killer cells, that they will directly kill the virally infected cells. So that's the virally infected cell with the viral particles in. This lymphocyte will come along. It will drop noxious chemicals. So that, that's the CD8, the cytotoxic cell, will drop noxious chemicals on the cell and kill the whole cell. Uh, the cell can, the, the cell can be replaced by mitosis from adjacent healthy cells, but the viruses are all killed. This is why it's so important. The magnitude of Omicron cross reactivity in T cells was similar to that of beta and delta variants. So, of course, remember that the vaccines were actually developed for the original wild type variant. So what this is saying is that the cross reactivity between the the the, uh, the the wild type might be reduced a bit, but between the Johnson and Johnson, the Pfizer and the uh, the convalescent patients, there was cross reactivity. It was maintained. So we've got this phenomena called cross reactivity. Omicron cross reactive T cells was similar to that of the beta and the delta variant. So pretty well, Omicron being killed just as effectively as the um, beta and the delta variants, this cross, this cross reactivity. Now, this I've told you this story before, perhaps, but but uh, Edward Jenner, who who was the first person to generate a, a, a vaccine, essentially, um, he, he it was actually an inoculation in those days. But he gave a boy called James Phipps, um, he gave him some uh, pus of uh, cowpox in his arm, 
scraped it into his arm. And, and that cowpox pus stimulated an immune response in James to cowpox, but there was cross-reactivity with smallpox. So James was also immune to smallpox after that. This cross-reactivity, because they're similar enough, the immune system can react to them not quite 100% as good, uh, but, but pretty well as good, and we get this phenomenon called cross-reactivity. This is the problem when we have a, a genetic shift. So if a completely new virus comes along and we haven't been infected with anything which looks a little bit like it, then we can get really bad infections as per the 1918-19 pandemic where there's a completely new type of virus. Whereas most years we get colds, of course, we keep getting colds. That's because the cold virus doesn't usually undergo this genetic shift. It just drifts a little bit. There's a few mutations. And uh, we, we'll get a cold, but we don't get a cold as bad as we could do because we've got some cross-reactivity from previous uh, viruses. So it's saying that is it's saying that is maintained, which of course is exactly what we want. Then some direct quotes from the authors. Um, These results demonstrate that despite Omicron's extensive mutations and reduced susceptibility to neutralizing antibodies, which of course we now accept. The majority of the T cell response induced by vaccine or natural infection cross recognize the variant. I mean, really, that is this is just an absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant result. We really couldn't have hoped for better science than this. This is excellent. Well preserved T cell immunity to Omicron is likely to contribute to protection from severe COVID-19. Excellent supporting earlier clinical observations from South Africa. So this is what we saw clinically. We saw in South Africa this is what was happening, which is good. Now we've got the science which supports that. And when the clinical epidemiology on the ground and the laboratory in the bench, the science in the laboratory in the bench support each other, then that is excellent. That's exactly what we want. They are both uh, in agreement. And then the authors do give a bit of further explanation just to, just to spell it out a bit. So we'll just do this before we finish. Um, the limited effect of Omicron's mutations on, T on the T-cell response suggests that vaccination or prior infection may still provide substantial protection from severe disease. Brilliant. Indeed, South Africa has reported a lower risk of hospitalisation and severe disease compared to the previous Delta wave. At big time it has, significantly so. But here we have the science to explain it. Uh, Cross-reactive T-cell response acquired through vaccination or infection may contribute to these apparently milder outcomes for Omicron. So again, they're being very cautious and scientific here, but uh, I would think that is highly likely. The resilience of the T-cell response demonstrated that uh, demonstrated here also bodes well in the event that more highly mutated variants emerge further. In other words, the T cells are responding to um, not a small part of the uh, spike protein, but to um, the whole spike protein, the hundreds of amino acids on the spike protein. It's responding to them all. Another reason I'm optimistic is the probability of another mutation coming along that outcompetes Omicron anytime soon probably isn't that high because Omicron is so infectious, so infectious. It'd be really hard to imagine a variant more infectious than that, which would outcompete it. The only one that could potentially outcompete it is one where there is very, very comprehensive immune escape, but that's exactly what this study is saying will probably not happen. So that, that took away kind of the final anxiety I had that the Omicron uh, might not be the uh, the final variant at least for a period of of time because I don't think anything's going to outcompete the Omicron in terms of sheer infectivity. This is saying that if another variant does arrive it probably won't have immune escape against the T cell response. Isn't the immune system wonderful? Thank you very much for watching.